Hi everyone, I'm Brian Fenster. I'm a value stream architect with Defense Unicorns and wanted to talk to you a little bit today about treating platform as a product. And before we get started on that, first I want to sort of pose the problem we're trying to solve. Now, the first one, when I talk about DevOps, this is what I mean. It's the union of people, process, and product to enable the continuous delivery of value to the end user. And if we're going to say that we're doing DevOps, then we have an organizational goal, which is the continuous delivery of value to the end user. Continuous delivery and value are key to that. And then if we're going to have a platform to try to enable this, the platform has a mission. It's, it's a product to enable us to do that continuous delivery of value to the end user. Now, a lot of organizations, when they start off on this journey of we need to figure out how to deliver value better, what they'll do is they'll spin up some product teams, but then they'll also let the team solve their own problems and you, for how to deliver their features. And so you wind up with this explosion of ad hoc tools. And this causes all sorts of problems, because what you'll find is that you have every team solving the exact same problem. You get inconsistent outcomes because the teams are all making it up as they go along. You wind up with pipelines that are insecure and non-compliant. They don't meet the real definition of the broader organization's definition of deployable. And you're spending, all these teams are spending brain power, time, money, uh, energy on how to deliver instead of what they're trying to deliver based off of the capabilities that they're responsible for. So what we want to do is we want to tame the chaos. And this, this comes from an you know, experience that I had at a very large organization where we went through this journey of taking ad hoc solutions and coming up with a centralized platform. But what we want is a common solution that removes duplication. It's easier to train and use. You know, in large organizations, it's very important. But even as the organization is relatively small, this is still important. And it helps us to have a common place to implement organizational goals and standards. We want to change the topology of how teams are structured. Having every team support their own method of delivery just doesn't work very well. We want to have that common platform that elevates all of the teams at the same time. At the same time, we want that to be a trusted product that people want to use and not a tools team. And, you know, this is something that organization I was working with, we were we started from day one with, we wanted to establish a brand identity. We had a platform made from multiple tools and each one of those tools had a brand and the broader platform had a brand. And people knew our brand and we knew our brand. Um, and that allowed that, that identity internally and externally that everybody can grab onto. And we wanted to treat this exactly like any other product. You need to have product goals. You need a roadmap of problems we're trying to solve. We also need to approach this in the, the manner that you would any other product. Let's start small, identify a core problem we're trying to solve, get that solved, work with those uh, lead people, and then scale out as we go. And we want to focus really heavily on the customer experience. If we're in platform, we have customers, our internal customers. We need to treat them exactly like customers who would be buying a product. We have a mission. We want to partner with product teams. We want them to be able to deliver quickly, safely, and securely. Uh, and we want to help them do that. And we have a vision for what that should look like. We want an irresistible developer experience. We want it to be better than what they're using now. We want them to want to use it if we're going to succeed. And you'll see this, right? If you build it, they will come. All we have to do is build the best tools, and then they will come and migrate to our tools because they're the best, but that only happens in the movies. There's lots of ways this could fail. And I think it's important to understand what those failure modes are. So first, if we develop a solution that's just painful and just impose it upon people, that's going to fail. They're not going to want to use it. We're going to be fighting them all the time. But even if we provide a good solution that we're not documenting well, we don't have the training around it, it doesn't fit their need, you know, we're not doing research about what their needs actually are and trying to work with that, uh, or we force them to use it, you must use our tools. And so, hey, try this. We want this to be easier. Then you'll fail. That what will happen is, is, is it'll be resistance and fighting all the time, and people will find excuses not to migrate. 
And you don't want that. You, you want to remove drag, not impose more drag. So what we want to do is first we need a product that will implement organizational goals. And we have goals, and these were goals that we had in that organization, which is we wanted to be able to rapidly onboard people on this. We wanted them to be able to easily migrate to our tools. We also wanted to increase reuse. We wanted to make sure that people could share common solutions, not only just share the same tools, but also share solutions for using those tools in multiple contexts. We wanted to make sure that we had automated security and compliance. We wanted, to, we wanted those the pipelines to be safe. And we had a goal of everybody implementing continuous delivery. And so we did things around that as well with the, the platform was acting as a force multiplier. For that. We focused on customers' needs, right? We wanted it to be easier to use. We also wanted to make sure that we had good support for it. We just weren't going to build tools. You know, standing up a, a, a training organization where we had recorded training where people could attend or a, a, a consume asynchronously that talked about how to use the the tools that these new tools they're being exposed to, to solve their problems, as well as sprinkle some continuous delivery mindset on them during the training. We developed user outreach sessions with, uh, you know, either lunch and learns or meetups or even community building, where we had a community of practice we built on how to use these, how to do continuous delivery better and work better as well as talk about the tools, you know, the same sort of developer advocacy you would see from any large uh, tool provider out there today. We also were really working on making the right things easy. Again, we had an organizational goal around continuous delivery. And so having templates and the, you know, having a platform, the number one was declarative that would allow you to easily implement flows for multiple contexts uh, easily as long as you're using a continuous delivery workflow with trunk-based development, continuous integration. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had a common developer experience to facilitate that cross-trading. We wanted you to not have to learn some new way of using the platform if you change tech stacks, change delivery environments. We wanted it to be as common as possible for whatever you're doing. And we, of course, established training on how to use the platform effectively, and, and not just online training classes, but establishing the ability to go and work directly with teams, with their context, to pair with them on how to structure things so that they could get to the outcomes they're trying to do. We're doing everything we could to make it super easy to use our platform. Of course, we also had those organizational goals around making sure we had guardrails baked in. We didn't want teams to have to figure out security. We baked security into the platform. You automatically got security scans for free by using our platform. You didn't have to go and figure out how to implement those yourself. Same with compliance. You know, we had certain compliance rules that had to be met. We were a regulated environment, and we didn't want teams to have to figure out how to how to do all of those compliance rules themselves. Again, how do we make that part of the platform? We wanted standard rules implemented in standard ways that couldn't be forgotten, couldn't be skipped, um, that were just a service we provided. Of course, we also wanted to be extensible. Platform teams can't, I, I can't predict all of the challenges for the different contexts people are delivering in and then go and build pipelines for people. I mean, if you have an effective platform, it's the, the pipelines are things that teams configure themselves, but based off of that master flow that would provide those guardrails that are so critical to keep them safe. And, you know, those, it, it, again, with templates, it would make those common solutions super easy to implement, easy to implement. And, and for us to act as partners with them and have outreach and do, you know, product ownership where we go and consult with the teams and see what things are working, where things were working so we can adjust. Our, our job is to be partners, not police. However, we still had organizational goals and there's things we didn't want teams to do. Now there's cases where teams had to migrate and we didn't want to break them because they didn't want to, that would make them not want to come to the platform. But, you know, by deliberately saying, these are problems we are choosing not to fix. You know, if you want to use GitFlow, you could use GitFlow but it would take a lot of workarounds in configuring the platform to be able to use GitFlow. 
uh, you know, if you did anything else that wasn't aligned with continuous delivery or, uh, you know, well, you, you couldn't skip security compliance, but if, you know, if around the delivery patterns we wanted, it would be harder, but not impossible. But that would allow, you know, it would encourage teams to flow down the behavior patterns we wanted for broader organizational goals. The other thing that's really important was to have a, a scalable way to operate the platform. We couldn't be in a situation where we had to grow as fast as the organization with adoption of the platform. We needed to do activities that were focused on force multiplication. So again, good documentation, and I mean documentation that we use the documentation as frontline support. So if somebody asked a question, they would come on to chat ops, ask the question, and we'd point them, we would take them to the spot in the documentation where that answer should be. If it wasn't there, we would improve the documentation. If it was there, then they would know where to go to see that and also share it. And then we use the documentation as well in our training sessions. And we had this continuous training that was always being updated as the tools evolved. We had good customer support, but this customer support was focused on how do we get your answer, answer to you quickly so that you're happy while also minimizing the overhead for us. The tools, of course, were self-service. We were always implementing improvements to tools to make them easier to use. And by letting the teams help themselves and by operating in a way that minimized our overhead, we were able to operate, uh, well, support a vast number of developers. We're talking nearly 19,000 developers with a relatively small organization of less than 100 people total with multiple tools implementing a broad platform and very little of those people dedicated to support. It's also really important we eat our own dog food. We used our platform to deliver our platform, which means that we were touching our tool and using our tool the same way our customers were all the time. We used our documentation to answer questions and use that feedback from whether we could answer questions effectively or not to improve our documentation. We built examples with our products so that, you know, sure, we're delivering our tools with our tools, but what other things can we show people how to deliver with our tools so that we can then again get feedback about what improvements we can make and directly helping customers use our products. You know, in some cases, when you had a very complicated delivery problem, sitting down with them, helping to solve the problem directly and then taking the feedback about how do we improve the platform. Also platform guides. I think these are very important. So this is also part of the training we did, but you know, you can't just throw tools at people and even documentation isn't enough. We had a, the, the group of experienced developers who would work with teams directly for six weeks at a time to teach them not only how to use the tools, but how to implement continuous delivery. So if you wanted to come through the process with us, we would sit that we would join your team for six weeks, parachute in, help you with testing, help you with how to work as how to work better as a team, understand continuous integration behavior, how to break down work better. Everything required to get you on the path to continuous delivery, move you to trunk based development, help you in any way possible. We had a very high success rate of improving teams and getting teams with higher morale after each one of those. And then we would use the feedback from those teams to not only improve the platform in general, but also to bubble up common problems that are happening across the organization or leadership to inform things like training budgets uh, or different things they could do to help clear impediments teams were feeling. And using the platform as a way to be that communication path between broader organizational goals and the teams trying to deliver every single day. Platform doesn't matter though, if, if, if we don't tackle these, if we don't really behave as a product. If people don't know about it, in a, a large organization, they probably don't know about it. You need to be advertising about it and, and talking about these things all the time. If they don't want to use it, the platform doesn't matter. Is it better than what they have now? What problems are they being, uh, is their current set of tools solving now? The platform's not solving. Well, let's add those to the problems on the roadmap that we need to solve. Don't force people onto it. Help them evolve towards it. Help solve those problems. Start growing as we go. Uh, you know, something else that was really key was we started operating their tools for them. 
so that we would remove that stress from them while we learned how their tools were solving problems we weren't, and then solving those problems for them, and then helping them migrate to our tools. If they can't use it, you know, you can't just throw a tool at somebody and assume that it's going to work in their context. Some teams are going to be in context that just can't use the tools. And so having that product mindset of working with them to find out what challenges they're having, why it doesn't work in their environment, and what it would take for us to be able to support that if they don't understand it. Again, it, you know, giving that information about how to apply it to their problems so they do understand it and making the tooling easy for them to use. Because there's too many other things that are hard. Our platform shouldn't be one of them. And they shouldn't have to jump through hoops to get it done. They shouldn't have to open a ticket just to, to, to uh, use the pi platform. It should just be self-service. They shouldn't have to beg for help. We should be begging them to help them. Uh, you know, they sh we should be focusing on their needs and not acting like, uh, you know, they owe us something because they don't. We owe them. Job of the platform is to elevate other developers. I feel this very deeply. I think that working on as a you know member of a, a platform organization is the highest level of development any developer can have, because we're the closest we're ever going to be to our customers. Not only are they our colleagues, but they're also our own persona. They're other developers. We want to help them focus on their business problems. Our business problem is to make it easy for them to solve their business problem. We need to automate away their toil. We need to find the things that they're having to do that just causes them a drag every day and then find creative solutions to bake that into the pipeline. You know, if, they're, if they have compliance rules they have to meet, those should be automated in the pipeline, not something they have to manually file paperwork on. We need to make sure the pipeline uh, where the platform is helping them flow downhill to success, that it's the easiest possible way to do the right thing. And to focus on that daily and to understand their problems and, and just be helpful. You know, we need to have empathy for our fellow developers. We need to make their lives easier. And we need to be the product we would want to use. And, you know, this image here is an example from the organization I was working in where this developer who worked in another part of the, you know, of the organization of deploying a tool that was used by more of the organization. He literally used our platform to create an easy button to deploy. This is how he deployed change. And it's just that level of joy meant that our platform had a brand that made lives better and more fun. You know, I, I know I covered quite a bit here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of thoughts here, but I, I think that, you know, all of these things are key to operating a platform as a product and making it successful, that we're not going to be successful if we just treat it like the tools team. If you want to talk more about it, you know, again, I work for Defense Unicorns where we make secure software delivery boring. Uh, we tackle all sorts of really interesting problems that, uh, you know, feel free to come talk to me about them because I've, they're, Challenges I haven't seen before in my career, let me tell you. Uh, but you can reach me on LinkedIn. This is Brian Fenster. Uh, reach me on Twitter. Or you can read my blog, the 5-Minute DevOps blog, at blog.brianfenster.com. And with that, thank you very much. And I look forward to talking to you on Slack. You can reach me on the Platform Story Slack. And uh, I'll see you there. Thank you.